Whoa, change of scenery. We are back. With me, we got Mitchell. We are in the great walleye state of Minnesota. It's been a minute since I've been over here, a couple weeks. And uh, we are flying by the seat of our pants. This is a random like three day trip. And uh, we got a super early start today. It's already 3.15 in the afternoon. Um, so we got here nice and early today. And uh, we are on Mille Lacs. Mille Lacs is obviously a phenomenal walleye destination, ton of water to fish. And uh, today we are hopefully gonna pick back up on a pattern that I started doing last time I was here, uh, which is pulling cranks deep for some big basin fish. Um, I don't wanna talk too much because we got a ways to go, but I kinda wanna go over the lead core a little bit, hopefully catch a bunch of walleyes. Hopefully these fish are still where they were last time I was here, so we don't have to start this long look for fish process and uh, on a big lake like this, but hopefully we can just get out here, capitalize on some good bites, and uh, get a good video done this afternoon and evening. Prediction. Oh, every time. We're gonna obviously catch them, but like you said, we got a few days here. Get a shot of that. That we, gear, see that gear? We got musky stuff. We, might, it's gonna we got crazy. walleye stuff. We got stuff for everything. We're not, I don't even know if we're gonna be fishing here tomorrow. We're just gonna go all over. We're going all over, doing a whole bunch of different stuff, flying by the seat of our pants. Let's get it going. Let's catch some fish. All right, is the mic on? Yep. All right, well, I think this is a little better one. We actually caught just a dinker. Little update, we haven't been filming much. Uh, we've been checking a few spots. Have not been seeing much, and we're really still not seeing much, but at least now we have a decent fish on. Like we kind of said, we're pulling lead out here in some of this deep water, fishing for some of these suspended fish in that 33, 36 foot range. And this fish, this bait was about 26 feet down. Hard to say how big he is yet. It's a lot of weight, not much head shaking. We're just gonna take our time here. And I was pulling just a little shad wrap on this one. Just covering a lot of this deep transition area. A lot of stuff that turns from hard to soft. And uh, yeah, fish on. Now, these fish show up really well in the graph and we're just not seeing a lot of them yet. So this is definitely not like a loop back through scenario. This is gonna be like catch this fish and just keep going or move spots. Um, but yeah, it feels, it definitely feels right. Grab the net for Yeah, grab the net. Looks like a good fish. Yeah. So Mitchell's gonna net this one for me. Probably got about 35 or 25 feet left here. One important part, especially when you're surging in waves like this, is just take your time. All the additional stress you put on a fish from just moving at two miles an hour is all amplified when you're surging. And one good tip when you're running lead is definitely tie in. I got about a 30 foot liter of uh, mono tied in at the bottom of this and it definitely helps kind of absorb a lot of that stretch. All right, we're at the leader now. Yeah, nice walleye here. Gonna keep backing up, bring him right to this one. The classic Malax walleye right there. He munched that shad wrap. He got the whole thing in his mouth here. We'll get him unhooked. And give you guys a look. Classic Malax fish. Big head on him, thin body. Look what he did to that shad wrap. Down the hatch, we're gonna get that guy unhooked real quick. Grab the long pliers. He's not hooked bad at all. Oh, he's already off, just like that. No harm to that guy at all. There we go, beautiful relax walleye. Let's let that guy go. Gotta dial in the pattern a little bit better, but we'll get there. There she goes, back to the depths. All right guys, we literally just set this one back out there. Caught Tom's fish like three minutes ago. Hooked back up on another one, so I don't know, maybe we are putting a pattern together and kind of yeah, not knowing what we're doing out here. Not seeing a lot in the graph, but uh, um, we're kind of fishing high off bottom a little bit, so it would make sense sometimes if you get some of these fish flying around that uh, you might be around more fish than you think, so. Hopefully that is the deal. 
take over driving while Mitch is. Mitch, you're pretty much just going straight though, aren't we? Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much. It does feel heavy with this lead. It's very interesting. My first day pulling lead. Pulling lead is an incredibly effective way to fish. I don't do it a lot where I fish, but uh, it seems like a lot of places to go in the summer. This is obviously kind of the deal. And I would consider myself a relatively inexperienced lead core fisherman, but I am fascinated by techniques I have not done a lot of. And it is always fun. I'm gonna get ready with the net here. I don't think we got a really big one on. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Actually, it's not too bad. It just got like weirdly sideways or something. Yeah. Nice chunker though. Nothing big, but that's three walleyes on the <laughs> same lure. Barely hooked. And that is that, uh, I always forget what they call this color. Oh, it's almost like a parrot looking thing. I would call this color orange, yellow. Orange, yellow, blue and color. Blue, yep, <laughs> that's the color. I already take a look. Not exactly what we're going for, but hey, it's a walleye, so we'll take it. Nice little 16, 17 incher. Not all Malax has to offer though. There he goes, a feisty little guy. All right, so why lead core? Why is lead core so effective? Well, what lead core does is it allows you to take crankbaits that have a very um, shallow diving range and put them down deep, right? Or be very exact with some of your bigger cranks that do get down deep. So here's like a little Shad Wrap SR5, great lead core and crankbait. I've been catching a bunch of fish on Mille Lacs on that crankbait this year. And basically that bait's only gonna get down like seven, eight feet trolling uh, in a regular application. You put it on lead core and you can put that thing wherever you want, right? You can put it down 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, kind of however you want, right? But basically what lead core is, it's a very thin diameter of lead and with the outer um, sheath of basically braided line. And what I am running is the Suffix Advanced um, 18 pound lead core. And a lot of guys have gone to this in recent years. It's very thin, which makes it dive very quick. You know, obviously the, more, the higher the diameter of your line, it takes more line to achieve depth. And uh, you know that's very important to have a thin diameter lead core, right? And uh, the other thing with lead is it's metered, so you don't have to be have a line counter to do this. A lot of times you'll hear guys talking like, "Oh, we're catching them at five colors back or eight colors back," right? Um, and it's metered every, or it's not metered, but every 30 feet it changes color. So you can see kind of as I reel in here, what we're going to see happen is it's blue right now, and then we're going to go to orange and that's another 30 feet, right? So if you don't have a line counter, don't feel like you have to get one, but having a bigger reel is very important, right? And lead core is speed dependent, so obviously the faster you go, the higher it's gonna come up in the water. So pay attention to your speed, um, you know, that's important as well. But the, the real advantage is, you know, the other way to achieve depth is with something like a snap weight or an inline weight or something like that, or a bottom bouncer, which does work well, but it's much more, it varies much more with your speed because a piece of lead is great for achieving depth, but it kind of goes all over the place depending on your speed, how much you're pulsing. If you do an inside turn like this, that thing's gonna sink down really fast. Lead core is much more uniform in how it fishes, but you can also hunt the water column with it, you know? If you're trolling at two miles an hour and you come up shallower, you can burst it a little bit and bring that bait up. Um, so it's an incredibly effective way to fish and you can get very surgically exact when you're running lead core um, as far as how deep you want that bait. And that's fundamentally why it's so effective. All right, we uh, made one pass looping around and just started the second pass where we caught the other fish. and. Uh, Literally what just started got the motor up and uh, got this line out and hooked up right away It feels like it could be a decent fish Trolling is all about making patterns and uh, well, We think we have one we kind of switch to a more similar crankbait similar color Shad wrap SR7 I believe Not a big shad wrap guy, but I think that's what it is. I don't even know what it is In a straight blue like blue and purple. Yep. 130 back. Which color was it though? Straight blue. Oh, I don't do lead color by yeah. colors. <laughs> I don't do lead by colors. I'm a straight uh, feet. I think feet's probably more accurate than what color. He's got. a foot guy. Yeah, I'm a big foot. I'm a big foot guy. <laughs> you get close. Yeah. Right here. Can I scoop him? Yeah. 
Trying to get the net. Little guy. Little guy, but we'll take him. All right, just a little guy, but we'll take it. We're, uh, we feel like we're putting something together right now, so we'll see. We got, what, a couple more hours of daylight? Yeah. This lake, you can't fish till dark, so we gotta get off in a couple hours, so we'll see what we can do. Turned into some A roll. <laughs> Spotted the fish off the right side and said that rock should go. It was super close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of times with side imaging, what Mitch is talking about is a lot of times with side imaging, you mark, mark fish vertically or uh, with sonar. And you can look at your side image and say, yeah, that fish is off the right side. Yeah, that fish is off the left side. And Mitch is like, oh, big mark off the right side. Now look at that. Hooked off. I don't even know if I got the rod going off because I was focused on the reel so much. <laughs> but we'll take it. And kind of the name of the game out here, obviously when you're running these open water patterns, um, is mostly just trying to get around them. You know, we obviously got some real fishy weather and uh, I'm not super concerned of, about, you know, trying to dial in the right this and the right that. Obviously you're always kind of doing a little bit of that, but as far as switching up to like harnesses, you know, or, or big cranks, little cranks, I'm just more concerned about getting around them. And I'm pretty confident if I get baits in these fish's face, they're gonna bite. And that's what we're doing now. You know, we're not around just a mother load of fish, um, but uh, we are getting bites, and we have not really been fishing for that long. We actually, kind of like I was talking about earlier, made a couple of passes and uh, just weren't seeing anything. And we kind of got out to a little bit more of the soft bottom stuff, and boom, boom, catching fish. All right, getting close. Mitchell's gonna net him. Audio's gonna be terrible because it's so windy. Typical Mille Lacs fashion. He's heavy though. Feels like a good fish. Really nice one. I might have to put the camera down for it. Oh, yeah, it's fucking really good. There we go. Dialing them up. And uh, fishing every day where we fish, um, this, pipe, this is not like a hardcore uh, bite, you know, where you're just fishing one rod and fishing, you know, lead core, lead core on it. It's a lot more of this, you know, covering a lot of water with uh, uh, a number of rods, more so. And putting baits a lot higher in the water column. So anytime you can kind of come to a new destination and figure something out like this, it is a great learning experience. He's an angry one. Well, there we go. Beautiful Malax walleye. He's got that little green Malax tint to him they get out here. Awesome, catching fish, tough to beat. Let's let him go, get another one. All right, so lead core setups. I just did a lead core video probably a week or so ago. Um, we got asked a ton of questions on setup and stuff like that. Um, as far as the technical side, there are some tweaks to kind of your nor normal trolling setup um, that I kind of do on my lead core specific setups. So one is big reel. I like big reel with big volume. This is an Okuma. Uh, this is your, uh, uh, what are they called, cold water 303s. Um, it's a, definitely a bigger size reel. It's more like your musky sized reel, your trout sized reel, your salmon sized reel. Salmon guys might go a little bit bigger, but it worked for that. And uh, I put on a full 300 feet of it on here, because um, the other thing I use this for is lake trout fishing, which is super productive for that too. Um, so I like to have that full amount on here. And lead core takes up a lot of room, because it's very thick, right? And uh, kind of the rod that you want to fish this on is a very limber rod, very long and limber rod. And the reason for that is you always want a limber rod when you're trolling in general, especially with cranks. But the reason you want that for lead core is because lead, lead core has no stretch to it and it fishes very heavy. So your rod is naturally gonna be loaded up a little bit, a little bit more than if you're just pulling a crank on this or a bottom bouncer, especially when you're fishing deeper water and you got like 100 feet of that lead out. 
and you definitely need more sponge in it once that fish bites. So you don't want to be going with a very soft or a very uh, uh, stiff rod, and you don't want a rod that's so soft that the lead core alone kind of maxes out a fair amount of that load. You know, you when you're pulling, you want that rod loaded up a little bit, and then when a fish bites, it really loads that rod up and sponges it up. Generally, these rods are going to be longer. They're going to be in that eight foot plus range. Even a lot of guys will pull up rod or use rods even a little bit longer than that. Now, on the technical side. Basically, all we're doing is we're, you know, obviously got a lead core um, on here, but I like to run like 20 or 30 feet of 12 pound fluoro or mono. This is mono on here. And the reason you want that is obviously clarity. You know, if we're fishing Mille Lacs and Mille Lacs is real clear, and uh, we want that uh, that bright lead core, that bright colored lead core, to be out of that fish's line of view, right? So that's why we run that quite a bit of mono or fluoro on there. Another reason you run that is the same thing. It's shock absorption, right? So you got that little bit of flex in there to hold those fish, right? It's just like throwing like a snappy bass crankbait or something like that. You like fishing that on a softer rod with softer stretchy line um, to get some of that shock absorption and hold those hooks in there a little bit more, right? And we're pulling real quick. We're pulling at like two, two and a half and uh, going that fast, you definitely need something to absorb that shock, right? So that's kind of the rigging side of it. And uh, you know, if you kind of do these things, you know, set up a lead core reel that's a little bit bigger profile, get a long trolling rod that's got some sponge to it, tie in a longer lead like that. Um, you could run a swivel, I tie an Albright knot that's line to line on here on something like a crankbait because it's not spinning a lot. And uh, it's really that simple. Alright guys, we are hooked up on another one. So, uh, actually this might be the last fish and then we're gonna head it in. Just a quick relax video. Yes. I wanted to do a little lead course sum up, talk about how effective it is, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's worked so far. We actually, so we got one rod that's just clocking them and that's like, a, uh, like that parrot colored shad wrap. And uh, we've just kind of been switching it up on the other rod, and now we got a little uh, purple 20 tail dancer on there. Yeah, we got two fish on this rod now. Yeah. I don't think it's a super big one. It looked big when it hit, it really loaded up nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice relaxed walleye. There we go. Catching them, pulling lead out in the basin. Beautiful sky too, we'll kind of fix the white balance, but look how cool that is out. I feel like we should be casting musky baits. We should be, absolutely. <laughs> it's just saying we should be casting musky baits. So one good tip here is you're kind of fishing this no man's land stuff. One thing, good thing to do is drop waypoints where you're seeing fish and catching fish. And you can kind of see we got like a little cluster right here. So we could probably diagonal it going this way and stay in these fish a little bit longer. Take a look, last fish of the evening, we'll take it. And as you can see, we're gonna have quite the boat ride back. So uh, <laughs> yeah, let's get them back in the water and head on, head on out of here. Awesome, let's do it. All right guys, well that is gonna do it for this quick little evening video out here on Mille Lacs. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching it. We're gonna be on the road in Minnesota for the next several days looking to smash some more walleyes, maybe some muskies. We don't really know where we're going. We don't really know what we're fishing for, um, but somewhere with big fish potential. And uh, yeah, anything to add? Uh, no, stay tuned for more. Stay That's tuned it. for more. We're gonna make a uh, run through the waves here on Mille Lacs, back to the resort back to editing video, post this up hopefully tomorrow. Get a couple cervezas while we're at it. And this guy's talking about cervezas. <laughs> Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. If you're not yet, please subscribe. Sorry about the ter terrible audio. See you guys next time.